Great. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Prescott College's Impact Career Series. My name is Pamela Delaney. I'm the Dean of Graduate Admissions here at Prescott College. And I am joined today by my two inspiring colleagues, Associate Directors of Admissions, Daniel Mendez and Jody Straker. So as I mentioned, this session is being recorded. And if you could please mute your microphone, that would be wonderful. We are going to have some breakout sessions after the information session is over. And so please do, if you have any questions, drop them down and uh, join Daniel and Jody at the end in the breakout sessions where you can answer your questions or ask your questions. So what is the Impact Career Series? Uh, we designed this Impact Career Series with a focus on occupations that prioritize uh, the that prioritize the meaningful and positive impact on the world, in the world and the environment, while encouraging a more just, inclusive society. Um, all of these careers are careers that are in demand and emerging. And today's focus is going to be on uh, counseling and helping professions. Now, all of these, uh, how do we define helping professions? Helping professions are fields where uh, the primary focus is to insist, assist individuals, groups, and communities in uh, addressing various personal, social, emotional, psychological uh, challenges. They, and they also uh, prioritize ethical standards, empathy, and a commitment to social justice uh, through care and practice. Careers in uh, health professions are seen as those with a bright outlook. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, bright outlook careers are those that are defined by a faster or much faster growth rate than other careers in the United States, but also an, or a large number of openings. So the careers that you see here in counseling, education, uh, are, uh, school counseling, social justice, and psychology are all considered bright careers with a bright outlook. And this is an important, um, this session I think today is really important because we all, if, you're, if you come to this information session, you know that, um, that helping careers, specifically those focused on community and mental health, um, are critical in today's world. According to the National Alliance of Mental uh, on mental health, one in five adults experience mental illness and one in 20 uh, experience severe and uh, serious mental illness. And 17% of youth between six and 17 experience mental health issues at some point in their youth. So, um, you know, whether we are looking at mental health counseling or school counseling or careers in psychology and social justice, these are important careers for the future. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my amazing colleague, Daniel Mendez, who's going to talk a little bit about Prescott College and how we're positioned uniquely to help prepare you for careers in, in helping profession. Daniel? Thank you, Pamela. So you ask yourself, why Prescott College? So our mission is the following. Together, we create interdisciplinary, experiential, and diverse learning environments that inspire future leaders to create a health healthy, just, and sustainable world. Our vision, Prescott College will be recognized as a leader in experiential and collaborative education, creating opportunities for students to affect positive change in education, the environment, and society. And here are our values, inclusive community, experiential and field-based learning, culture of creativity, justice, individualized education, regener regenerative sustainability, if you go to our landing page at prescott.edu, you will see our mission statement. Uh, but also we are accredited by the Higher Learning Commission and the Association for Experiential Education. And one thing that I'd like to you know, share with you is that education at all levels is under threat now. And more than ever, universities like Prescott College need to double down on their mission statement. Uh, so I just want that to resonate with everyone for a little bit. And now, I'd like to share the following uh, program with my colleague, Jody. All right, thank you, Daniel. Um, so my name is Jody Straker. Um, I work primarily with the uh, MS in counseling and its related certificates. And so, um, so you'll see on, on the slide ahead of, uh, in front of you um, a few key um, details, and um, and it's important to know that you know we're we're accredited through KCREP and and things like that. 
what's um to, to kind of piggyback on what uh um Pamela was saying about the mental health crisis that we are in in this country. Presley College has a very forward-leaning uh master of science and counseling program. Uh, while on paper uh the curriculum being clinical mental health counseling uh, is very similar to uh, the curriculum uh, across the country. Um, the, the, the difference comes in, uh, in, in the ethos of the program. Uh, we uh, we want our, our uh, students to uh, really focus on being the counselors who they want to be. Uh, we want students to uh, to to really be curious, uh, to engage with the material, um, and to uh, to get involved in um, things like uh, our concentrations, uh, human sexuality, marriage, couple, family counseling, um, social justice and counseling, and somatic counseling, which is our uh, most popular uh, concentration. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the certificates um, coming up um, pretty soon. But um, if you are currently in a um, a master's um, program. Program, um, let us know. Um, it's possible that you can uh, transfer in um, up to 15 credits. Usually those are uh, from KCREP accredited programs, but that's not uh, always the case. So um, I look forward to talking with you um, a little bit more, and I'll turn this over to uh, Daniel. Thank you, Jody. So the other program that Prescott has is the Master of Education in Professional Preparation Programs. So our program is approved by the Arizona State Board of Education and the Arizona Department of Education as an educator preparation program. Uh, and we do uh, help with the following certifications, educational leadership, elementary or secondary education, special education, mild to moderate, early childhood education, and early childhood special education. Most of our courses are 36 uh, credit hours with the exception of early childhood special education which is 40 credit hours. Uh, one thing I'd like to note too, is that we do have an accelerated educational leadership principalship program at Prescott College. Also, our, uh, the college is also a federal teach grant eligible school. So uh, for those uh, students who qualify, there may be uh, some um, grant money available to you all. Uh, the courses are, uh, all the graduate courses at the college are pretty much 100% online asynchronous. Uh, the only thing that you won't do um, asynchronous is uh, your student teaching, that's site-based. And we also have an annual education colloquium uh, that's required. We just had one in Phoenix, it was amazing. Um, if we have any students um, today that are that live in New Zealand or in other countries and they can't make the education colloquium, um, you know, we, we can help with that as well. Uh, but in any event, um, I'm gonna send it back to my colleague, Jody. All right, so um, we have just recently uh, added an educational specialist degree uh, in experiential counseling, and um, we're really excited to have this uh, th this degree uh, because you can, it, it's really versatile in, in the sense that um, if you don't have a counseling degree already, um, you can take it, you can do it uh, concurrently with our uh, Master of Science in Counseling uh, program, or if you do have a counseling degree, um, you can do it as a, as a, a postgraduate uh, program as well. And um, you'll see that you can transfer in up to 15 credit hours from uh, from a, a counseling program. So it's um, it, it's it's pretty um, pretty easy to do. Um, so you see in front of you that it's 42 credit hours. But um, if you are in the current um, or going to be in the, the counseling program, um, many of those courses are courses that you're taking. Um, within the EDS and experiential counseling, uh, you'll choose between uh, adventure-based counseling and nature-based counseling. Uh, those credits uh, are also uh, part of it. Um, so really, um, you're, you're only adding a few, uh, few credits to, to engage in a program that is going to give you um, a, a, a good deal of education and, and, and really put you kind of ahead of the game when you grow up and, and become a baby counselor. Uh, when you go out and uh, get your first job uh, as a counselor, you'll be able to uh, focus on uh, things like adventure-based or nature-based counseling. Um, and, and really importantly, um, I think, is to th that, that you'll be able to consider yourself as, as an expert. And that's, uh, that's really attractive to uh, mental health agencies out there. 
Um, so I will, um, let's see, let's go to the next slide if we could. Um, so I just uh, mentioned um, adventure-based and nature-based counseling. So we have certificate programs that, uh, two of which uh, adventure-based and nature-based counseling could be in the EDS. Expressive arts therapy is not in the EDS. Um, so, uh, so adventure-based counseling um, is uh, it, it, it's a tool in your toolkit. Same as same as nature based counseling. Both of these are fifteen credits. There's some experiential components to it, um, and really they are meant for you to be able to um, integrate um, outdoor uh, activities or or uh, environmentally based uh, therapies um, into um, into your practice. Expressive arts therapy um, you'll see is a thirty credit hour. A uh, uh, certificate program. It is. Uh, it, it, it's. It's pretty. Pretty robust. Um, it meets the requirements for the Art Therapy Credentials Board. If you want to get your ATR, um, it also meets the requirements for the International Expressive Art Therapy Association or IATA. Um, if you want to get your REAT, which is a, a registered expressive art therapist. Um, so this is a really. Um, it, it, it's a really good. Uh, certificate to add on to a counseling degree, um, particularly if you want to start thinking more expansively about what healing looks like and how you get there. Um, so uh, let's go on to the next slide, please. And uh, I think we go back to Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Jody. Uh, so another program that we have at Prescott College is the Master of Education in School Counseling. Again, this program is approved by the Arizona State Board of Education and the Arizona Department of Education. Uh, our program adheres to the uh, American School Counselor Association ASCA model standards and competencies. This program does not fall under our KCREP accreditation, but once in the program, we do follow uh, the, the model of uh, KCREP standards under Section 5. Another requirement of this program is that uh, students need to do a 600 clock hour supervised counseling practicum. Again, the courses are 100% online, and it's a 36 credit hour program, and you'll be invited to the annual education colloquium. But uh, the question I often get from prospective students is they, they want to know, um, you know, where, where they can seek employment. And basically, I tell them, you know, most, most if not all school districts uh, will accept this degree. Uh, but if you want to work at a private school, a charter school, a parochial school, uh, th this degree will give you the skill set necessary to be a school counselor. And, you know, uh, most students, you know, I don't know their background, but you can leverage this degree to do other work in the community. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to give it back to Jody and she can talk about one of our other amazing programs. So I am really excited to be able to talk about uh, the MA in critical and community psychology um, for a number of reasons. Uh, so this degree is, um, it's not counseling. Uh, it's, it's not um, anything having to do necessarily with counseling uh, or the practice of it. What it does, however, um, it gives you the tools to look at um, at, at at counseling and, and psychology as a whole uh, very critically. Um, this is coming from uh, very much a social justice um, uh, perspective, and there are very, very few uh, programs uh, like this in the country. Um, the one that does come to mind is at Pacifica Graduate Institute in, in terms of liberation psychology, uh, and um, which is also included in um, in in the community uh, critical and community psychology. Um, both of these are are uh, social justice oriented uh, um, programs that are um, really leading you to be able to go into the human services field, into uh, if you want to further yourself into into counseling, um, into a doctoral degree. To really be able to implement socially just uh, policies uh, and and methodologies um, into um, how we treat each other, uh, it's it's a, a fairly short program in terms of thirty six credits. Um, like everything else, it's it's asynchronous. Um, it, it's it, it's really versatile in the sense that. Um, we we have this set set curriculum, but we also have a number of. Uh, of electives within the uh, within the program that you can uh, choose from, so you can really drill down into those societal issues that you are uh, wanting to focus on. So um, I look forward to talking uh, to y'all with about, about this um, in the future. But we'll we'll move on to the next uh, 
slide if we could, please. Hi. So the other program we have is the Master of Arts in Social Justice and Community Organizing. The, you know, the SJCL program is designed for the social justice advocate, community organizer, really doing hands-on work or, you know, boots on the ground or for individuals who see the need for this training or this program um, that's called Arizona Serves that does a lot of uh, work in the community and a number of our AmeriCorps members ha have, um, have graduated from our SJCO program. Uh, so uh, some key details that you're actually learning from expert faculty who's actually doing SJCO work in their communities. Um, you know, it encourages critical examination of power dynamics, social structures, institutional practices that contribute to injustice. It's a flexible, affordable, and experiential program. It's 36 credit hours. Um, there's no uh, residency requirements. Um, also, the, um, the critical community um, psychology program has no residency requirements. Um, so this program is uh, amazing in terms of cost, which we will visit uh, with all of you later in just a few moments. Um, so no, back to Jody, and Jody can talk about um, all the amazing student resources Prescott has. So um, some of you or all of you may know that we are, uh, we have a campus, we have uh, students on campus, uh, primarily undergraduates. Um, and so uh, most of our grad students, I think all of our grad students actually are at a distance. Um, and in just because you're at a distance, it doesn't mean that you um, don't have resources. Um, it's very important that we um, that we serve our on campus and um, and our um, at distance students um, and and really help to to make this more of a learning community. Um, so we have a number of things that we do to do that. Um, in terms of support, we have uh, we have personal counseling services, um, and we use uh, you will. And so uh, so. I think you have about 20 hours of uh, uh, free counseling available to you. Um, if you are neurodiverse, if you um, have other um, uh, need other accessibility, we have an access, accessibility and um, disability support service uh, office. Uh, we have uh, academic um, advising, but we also have uh, we also have a support advisor um, uh, available to you as well. So everybody really has two uh, two advisors. Um, with the library, um, yes, we have a physical library, but we have a really extensive uh, uh, e um, uh, ebook um, uh, offering. We have um, you know all of the the uh, academic databases. Uh, it's it's a really robust um, service that we provide in terms of library services. Uh, we have a writing center, both on campus and online. Uh, we have uh, we use Canvas. So if if any of you are just coming out of an undergrad. Um, online-based program, you'll probably be familiar with that. Um, so we have a we have a really robust uh, group of people who are really standing behind you because as a learning community, um, we're all invested in the same thing, whether you're a student, uh, faculty, or staff. So um, please let us know what, uh, what we can um, talk to you more about in terms of student services. Hi, so now we get to that question on how to apply and our admissions highlights. So um, I also do, we all do physical recruiting too, statewide and across the country. Um, I also support our undergraduate recruitment um, and just some things I wanna highlight about um, our admissions process. You know, we don't require a GRE or GMAT. We have no application fee. We have a holistic admissions process and, a non and we're a non-exclusive school. Uh, so how to apply is pretty easy peasy, you know, complete our online application, submit a resume to professional or academic references, uh, transcripts. We can accept unofficial transcripts to make a, uh, an admissions decision, but at some point we will need official transcripts. And we also want you to write an admission statement, three to four pages, double spaced, and use the APA uh, format if you're citing uh, sources. And admissions interviews may be required. Um, you know, we do require them for uh, several of our programs, but not all. And if you're thinking of applying, um, you know, 
You should also use the uh, federal application for free student aid, the FAFSA school code. Um, and also, if you want to just look at our application process, uh, you know, please uh, use your cameras right now and take uh, a picture of the QR code. And then uh, if you have any questions, uh, in, you know, in the following weeks, uh, on the next page, you'll have our uh, contact information. And I'm just giving everybody a little bit of time there to get the code up and uh, running if you want to take a picture. All right, everybody. Um, and here are our admissions contact information. <laughs> I love that picture, by the way. So <laughs> our admissions navigators, uh, today's um, presenters, uh, Jody Straker, uh, you know, that's her email, jody.straker at prescott.edu and her phone number. And feel free to take a picture of this uh, of this slide uh, to have our contact information available. Uh, my contact information is there, daniel.mendes at prescott.edu, uh, you know, our main admissions office. Uh, if you want to copy the, the URL or hyperlink, you have it. If you ever need to send anything via ma mail or standard mail, uh, you know, feel free to send it to the Office of Admissions. And now back to Pamela for upcoming events. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Jody, for that great highlight of our graduate programs that prepare individuals for uh, professions in the helping fields. Um, and so we do have additional series coming up. Uh, if you, today our goal was just to introduce you to our programs and that uh, prepare you for career impact careers. Next Thursday at 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Arizona time, we're very pleased to provide you with a career panel. So we will have a panel of three professionals that work in the helping professions, and you will have the opportunity to hear their stories um, and then to ask them questions. And I think that as you're looking at your own career development and new pathways, it, it's always very helpful to learn from individuals that have perhaps pivoted their careers or the paths that they took as they developed those careers. So please join us um, for the uh, session next Thursday to meet and, and ask questions of these professionals. We'll also talk a little bit more about the careers in depth with some data around um, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics around the growth, the opportunities in those areas. Um, you can find that information on our Impact Careers page there, and the, the URL is listed. We also have a virtual graduate open house later this month on February 24th at 10 a.m. This is a Saturday, or excuse me, at 9 a.m., at 10 a.m., excuse me, Arizona time on a Saturday. And um, this is where you'll get a chance to meet all of our admissions navigators and learn about our entire portfolio programs. And we go into a little bit more in depth in those sessions, we tell you a little bit more about Prescott College. We also um, typically have a current student join us and uh, someone from financial aid. So that's a pretty informative hour as well. And then our next uh, information session in this series will be focused on careers in education. So K through 12 education, higher education, um, professional outdoor education, environmental education, those type of things. Um, will be on March 4th. And so we hope that you will be joining us for future sessions. It's always great to see you all. Now, the next step that uh, we will do is we are gonna go into breakout rooms. And I'm going to let uh, Daniel describe uh, how the breakout rooms operate. And this is just, please stick around and talk to Daniel and Jody individual, because this is where you can really dive in and ask questions that are relevant to you. And so um, first I'm going to hit stop record so that we don't necessarily need to do this part.